May the 4th be with you. Happy May 4th and happy Star Wars Day to all Star Wars fans. And with that being said, it being Star Wars Day and all, we're going to rank from best to worst all nine Skywalker Saga movies. Okay, so I'm not counting Solo or Rogue One. Those movies will be on another time for another video. But for this one, we're going to rank one through nine all the Skywalker Saga movies. I don't want to offend anyone, but I know inevitably this list is going to offend someone. Let's get started with the video, okay? Number nine is episode two, Attack of the Clones. To me, this is hands down the most boring movie of all. Um, I'm not sure, I understand that there's world building and that's why we have this and there are some moments of it that are important. For example, the idea of the clones and etc. But my goodness, was this movie dull. Count Dooku is a lame uh, Sith Lord. I understand that he trained Qui-Gon Jinn, cool stuff, great story. I understand that he cuts off um, an arm and it's it's cool stuff and the and I will say the battle inside that stadium the gladiator stadium is very cool um, and, But then you get scenes like this I don't like sand It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere Awful just awful Hayden Christensen is not at his best. I'm sure it's because of directing that George Lucas had for him. But my goodness, this was a dreadful, to me, Star Wars movie. Very boring. It's not necessarily that. It's dreadful because it's boring. Star Wars should not be boring. Okay? Number eight is episode one, Phantom Menace. Now, this is... Uh, this is, of course, this was a huge build-up to this movie. I was very young when this was. This came out in 2001. No, 1999. It came out in 1999. So I was eight when this came out. I was eight years old when this came out. And I remember thinking Jar Jar Binks was hilarious. I thought that he, this was, I actually had a good time with this movie. I remember when I was a kid. But as I've been able to watch it over and over and over as I got older, I know why it's not good. I mean, if it wasn't for this guy... This movie would have been complete and utter failure. Liam Neeson seems tired. And I love, actually, Qui-Gon Jinn. I actually think he's actually a really cool character in the extended universe. He is awesome. And I think Liam Neeson could have done better. I don't think he did bad, per se. Um, I think a lot of people give uh, a little young Anakin a big uh, pain. And they give him a lot of trouble over this. And I just think it's just not fair. Um, I think that he's just a kid, and I think he did. It. I, I think he did as well enough as a kid. Yes, his line delivery is not the best, but yes, I think this movie is serviceable because of one scene. But overall, this is not a good movie. This is not a good movie. Now we're gonna get to a little bit of some controversy. Uh, com uh, controversy here. With number seven being The Last Jedi. Oh my goodness, what a movie. That was such a controversial movie. I mean, from top to bottom, people argue till they're blue in the face over this movie. Whether it's good, bad, or either. I'm going to tell you this my way. As a cinematographer, as a cinema, as for cinematography, directing, and also, the movie is gorgeous. It is a beautiful movie. It's To me, probably the most beautiful in the series. As far as shots are concerned, beautiful set pieces. It is beautiful. As far as how it treats the material, garbage. As I think it does not treat with respect the plan that was in order by J.J. Abrams and George Lucas to begin with. I think it was just such a train wreck as far as plot is concerned. I think that Rose and the whole Canto Bite scene is completely pointless and useless. But again, overall, it's a beautiful movie. I think they got Luke wrong. I think Ryan Johnson got Luke completely wrong, him being this hermit. And again, I'm not even going to go into the fact that the whole premise of Force Awakens was to find a map that Luke left so they can find him in case they need help from him. And yet, this movie opens up with him like, get away, go away, or this. Yeah, that's not my Luke Skywalker. I'm sorry. Whether people want to admit it or not, that is not my Luke. And, and you see it here. Every single time this movie, I think, makes a step 
Every step forward is a step back. I love the throne scene, although there's some choreography mishaps. But as far as that scene, very cool. They kill Snoke, so they built up this baddie for no reason. But we'll get to that later in the list. My number six movie was Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker, to me, was just nostalgia. I think it's, it was J.J. Abrams trying to clean up the mess that Ryan Johnson left and tried to fix all the mistakes that were made or at least that, that what the fans believed were mistakes. And I think it came across as too gimmicky a lot of scenes. I think that there was some, I think there was some really cool scenes in it. I loved um, the concept of, I mean, finally Kylo Ren beating Rey because he's trained more than Rey. He was trained by Luke exclusively. I understand this movie. They try to patch that hole by not making her, you know, the Jesus of the, of the Jedi world. Um, without any training. I mean, even Anakin had to train. He was a chosen one, and yet this girl doesn't train. I mean, I'll get to that and all. That's a whole different other movie. But Rise of Skywalker hit the notes as far as nostalgia goes. I love the scene. I would have rather have seen the Force Ghosts at the end. Like, I would love to have seen Qui-Gon manifest, Obi-Wan. Even all of them standing there would have been awesome. Um, if you really wanted to even open up to, like, lore and just, like, you're going to take some chances with it, it would have been cool if there was some form of Sith ghost. That would be really cool. It's Force ghost for the light side. That would be really interesting if they ever did a Force ghost for the Sith side. If you're going to take gambles anyway and mess around with the lore anyway, why don't you do that? You do the telepathy thing, with, with which is a great scene with Kylo Ren, um, that he lifts up the lightsaber. And it really shows some really cool scenes there. That was awesome. And so, and I even love that they make Kylo Ren more a uh, person. To me, in this whole series, the whole sequel trilogy, which I just finished now, or I'm going to finish in the next one, is that they are, Kylo Ren is a really compelling character. I think they, they had no idea what to do with him at first, but I think he's a great character. And they could have really made him much more than what he ended up being. Number five, Force Awakens. Uh, I think the Force Awakens was great because it was a it was a period of time since Revenge of the Sith till now, and I think it was really cool to see the Star Wars hype again. The hype train was back and it was stronger than ever. It got me really back into Star Wars. It was such a cool movie as far as beauty tech, but let's not forget the fact that it's just a it's a new hope with a new with a new paint job. That's what it is. It's a it literally is a new hope with a paint job while stepping on. You know, the originals while, like, you know, killing off certain people. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous as far as that aspect. But, yes, Force Awakens is a beautiful movie. It's pretty good. Now we get into my top four, and these are all, to me, good movies. I think they have minor flaws, but they're good movies. And, and I think uh, Return of the Jedi at four is a great spot for it. I think it's, to me, it was a great thrill ride. Yes, there are plot holes in it. I get it. I totally get it. Why would they build a Death Star 2? How does how does Luke's plan, how much has to go right for Luke's plan to even work? I totally get it. I totally understand. But man, that movie is so fun. It ties up with a bow at the end. I, I really love the scene where Anakin and Obi-Wan uh, are there at the end with L Yoda just looking on to L Luke to say, here's the new future of the Jedi. And it's a really cool uh, movie. I I mean, I can't stand the Ewoks. Yes, uh, you know, my friends love, obviously, they're girls, the little teddy bears. But I do love uh, other aspects of it. I love the, the confrontation between the Emperor and the Je and Luke and Darth I, uh, Vader. I love that dynamic. I love the conclusion of Anakin's arc of him actually uh, bringing f true balance to the Force. That's why I believe he's the true chosen one. And what they did with Rey is an insult to that. It, I, whether they want to admit it or not, that's what ended up happening. Um, and so I love Return of the Jedi and I think it's a great movie. Okay, for this section, I totally forgot to... <laughs> Uh, add number three, which was A, a New Hope. Um, I think this movie was outstanding. And of course, I think that this one said it all. It's the reason why we even have Star Wars to begin with. So without it, we would not even be able to even have the legacy that we have now. We have the introduction of Darth Vader as an imposing force. Luke displaying what it is to maybe be the future hope of the Jedi. 
and really humanity and the galaxy as a whole. We meet uh, Han Solo and the kind of rough dude that he is, but yet has a kind of a heart of gold. He's um, we meet Princess Leia, which is to me one of the best female leads I've ever seen. You can have a tough lady and and still have her flaws, and Princess Leia is no different. We meet Chewbacca, we meet Yoda, we meet all these characters, and it's to set up what is to be the future of Star Wars. So, a new hope for number three. My number two is Revenge of the Sith, and I I think this is a, a one for the prequel trilogy being this high up. Yes. Uh, watch back Revenge of the Sith, and you tell me that that's not a good movie. Uh, it's a, it's a very good movie. It's again a lot writing from beginning to end. You know what's going to end up happening, and so with that being said, you know you already know what's going to happen. These turn to Vader. Now you want to see how that happens. You uh, the, for me, one of the best scores was when it was Anakin and Obi Wan fighting on Mustafar, and, and that the immediately John Williams score comes in. It's it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning, and of course it it sets you up for a New Hope, and it's a beautiful beautiful movie as far as um, shot for shot is it is very uh, soap opera ish very operatic but let me tell you I love this movie I think it's so good and I think this is where Hayden Christensen is at his best in the three in the two movies that he's in I think that he's outstanding he um, he's great my number one movie of the Star Wars series is Empire Strikes Back this is a perfect movie. Perfect. I have nothing to critique about it. I have nothing that I could say that I don't disagree with. Um, I think that it's outstanding as far as from beginning to end. I think that it um, it does something that no other movie does. They lose. Our heroes lose. And that's an important thing. That our heroes lose. And I think that it sets you up for a, a true perfect trilogy. Introduce your heroes. Second movie, they, they lose. That gives them motivation for Return of the Jedi to defeat those people. I think I love I love the way Empire Strikes Back plays out. I love Han Solo's Han. He's great in this one. This is where you see Han as Han. I think it's awesome. Um, his arc is is continuing to grow. Uh, I think he should have, in my opinion, I think he should have died in Re Empire Strikes Back. I, <gasps> uh, I do think he should have died. I think his arc in Return of the Jedi is a lot wasted. He has gr good moments. But I think in Empire was his zenith. He should have, in my opinion, died in Empire and closed off his arc. But they, they decided to go a different route. But I, but either way, Empire Strikes Back is a great movie. Not just a good movie. It's a great movie. And that's why IMDb has it as one of the greatest movies of all time. It's an outstanding movie. Well, that's it. That's my top nine ranked from best to worst Star Wars Skywalker Saga, saga movies. Now... This doesn't mean that it's the all-knowing, uh, all-encompassing one. If you have a disagreement, comment below. Tell me which ones you think are better. And tell me where I got it wrong. Because I'm sure I got it wrong. Let me know where. And if you like what you see, man, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate anyone that wants to support the channel. Um, again, I do this because I love what I do. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for fame. I do it so I can have a good time talking about things that I love. So like always, may the fourth be with you. And like I always say, may the force be with you. Have a good one, guys.